Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to convert a Harbor Freight paint pot, this Harbor Freight paint pot, into a resin pressure pot so my wife can start making some things out of resin. And I will likely also make things out of resin. Some stabilized wood handles for knives. I've got some other ideas. Either way, let's get over to the table. I'll walk you through this and we'll uh, see if this thing holds air when we're done. All right, well we have here all the necessary fittings that we need beyond the pressure tank from Harbor Freight. 3 8 to 1 quarter inch adapter. We have a quarter inch ball valve, quarter inch brass angle. We have a male air valve, and then we have a quarter inch cap. We also have some Teflon tape. All right, so step one as with any project, is to unbox the materials. So let me slide my fittings off the side, get my tape out of the way, bring over this pressure pot. So one thing I have yet to talk about on this channel are pocket knives. Huge, huge pocket knife fan. I collect a lot of them, probably more than I should. If it's something you'd be interested in seeing some more of, leave a comment down below. Maybe I'll do a video on my top three favorite EDCs. Boom, unboxed. All right, so first thing we need to do is get rid of this. We don't need this. We're not actually shooting paint. And this looks like just unscrew if I had hands like monkey wrenches. Back with the right tools. Maybe I'll leave this whole clip in of me unscrewing this and see how many people make it through. All right, we don't need that either. So here's our lid. This adapter right here is actually an air diverter. So this blows out the air as you're filling up the tank out the sides instead of directly into the pot. First thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pop this guy off right here. We'll be reusing that. And this guy right here can come out. All right. We don't need that. We don't need that. One eternity later. Well, I almost killed myself doing this, but I got this nut loose. Yeah, so. Oh, so much. So much stuff. Don't need that. These uh, threads are pretty nasty. So I'm just gonna get in there with a wire brush. All right, so on the paint outlet section, we are going to take reducer and we're going to use our pressure valve and we're going to put these together. We are gonna be adding Teflon tape. Teflon or nylon, depending on, they might be the same thing. Maybe I have no idea. Roll, roll, roll off. All right, so, boom. Valve right here. All right, so that valve is in. We're gonna remember this valve because later we're going to adjust it using these screws right here. So here we go, first piece is in. Now, air inlet. Here's our regulator. Just so we can see where everything needs to go, I'm going to put on the handle. Handles there. Oh, look at the safety valve. The safety valve is now moving. Look at that. Look at that. Boom! We are like a professional modifying people group. All right. What? What? What are you doing, Adam? What are you doing, Adam? We have a problem here. All right. Hopefully, by watching this video, you won't make the same mistake that I just did. Order of operations are very important. All right, so more tape. You know, I don't know if there's a 
optimal number of wraps you should do for this. Is that going to make it? Whew. Now, when this is set up as a paint tank, air comes in, pressurizes the pot, paint flows up that rod that we took out from the bottom here, and would have come out so you could spray paint. We just need the air to go in and stay in, except if there is a overload of pressure. So we are going to take this little cap guy right here, and we're gonna cap off this. If I had done this beforehand, this would make wrapping this piece up with this tape a little bit easier. Instead, we're gonna show people the way, the way, the way. Wrap, 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 wrap. Make sure you're pulling this nice and tight too. You want that to kind of get into those, the, the crevices of, this, of the threads, because that is where the air will escape, the imperfections in the threads. The Teflon tape will help with that. All right, you're good there. If I can put this guy back in now, will he still fit? Oh yeah. I like that, right there. We've got more pieces left. So off the other side, I'm gonna put this guy here. Off of there, we're gonna have our ball valve. And then we are going to have this guy right here. So, same drill as before. This, for this piece right here, I'm going straight up. But you could place this in a different position based off of what your preferences are of where your hose may be coming out of here. Um, I'm going to try going up and see how that works out for me. Just maybe, just maybe, I can do this. There we go. See, life is all about solving problems. At least my life is all about solving problems. I like solving problems. I think that's why I like having a lot of different interests. Because in the end, it all helps make me be a more... I don't want to say well-rounded, but more prepared individual. Not in a prepper, not in a emergency preparedness, but just more of like, more like MacGyver. I grew up watching MacGyver and you know, that guy had a possible solution for all problems that he came across. Even if some of them were a bit silly, like using chocolate to stop a nuclear reactor from leaking. But I think it was that, watching his stuff growing up, that moved me to be interested in being as diverse and, again, I don't want to say well-rounded, it's not a matter of balance, just a matter of being prepared and having random bits of knowledge kicking around in my head. All right, so we've got our pot, we've got our newly configured lid, now, can you even focus on the pressure pot there, pal? How's that? How's that? Are we good there? Right there? How's that? All right, so I'm going to grab my air compressor. I, uh, I'm going to grab I'm going to grab my air compressor. We're going to seal this up, and I'm going to dump some air in there, and I'm going to listen to see if I hear any leaks. If I do hear some leaks, I will grab some, I don't know, soapy, bubbly water and see if we can figure out where the leaks are, and hopefully we don't have anything going on here. As I mentioned, my compressor is this tiny little, tiny little jobby, but I think it will do what it needs to do. All right. You got to remember though, guys, I always forget this. It's not about the tools, it's about the capabilities. The brand name that is on your tool doesn't make any difference if you don't know how to use it. So if you can only afford this little guy and that's all you can get, start with that. You'll eventually be able to work your way up. Alright, here we go. Block your ears. Alright, 
Right, so we only got up to, I think, 20 pounds of pressure. So what is likely the culprit here is that this little valve right here, the, the spring on there is a little loose, and this is releasing early. So earlier, I had mentioned adjusting this valve right here if you notice that you weren't getting up to pressure. I neglected to mention one thing. I, I discussed the regulator, but I never explained what the regulator does. The regulator regulates here, this handle right here, will adjust the amount of air you can push into the tank. So if you have this too low, you may not get up to the pressure that you want, and you may not hear any leaks, you may not hear any air escaping the tank, and that's because we haven't triggered any of the safety valves. Our regulator is preventing us from putting in more air. So you want to adjust this valve right here, turning it, to adjust the amount of air pressure you can put into your tank. Well, let's see what we can do now. I'm not sure if you can see that, but that pot is currently sitting at 50 PSI. I am terrified at this, but here I sit, socially distancing from my pressure pot. So, pressure pot. We've got pressure. I've got a pot over here. It's under pressure. Boop, 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 boop. All right, we are either today or tomorrow. It's gonna be the same for you. We're gonna cut out a nine inch circle uh, for the base of this. So this is a pot meant for spraying paint. It's a concave base on that pressure pot, which means if you're putting things in there that you want level and flat, nah, not gonna happen. So we're gonna cut a little uh, nine inch piece of wood that should sit right in the bottom below all the weld seams, give us a nice flat, stable position to put some resin on. Several days later. So I mentioned we were gonna cut a nine inch disc out of wood. It occurred to me as I scoured my basement that I actually don't have a piece of wood that large and instead of trying to go fancy and join things, it dawned on me that in the bottom of the box was this beautiful piece of thick cardboard. And I made a hole. So, nine inch disc, it's pretty solid. It takes up a little bit of space, not super ideal. But here's our disc made of cardboard. Bloop. So now, in here, we have a beautiful flat surface for putting our resin projects in. All right, so we've got our pressure prod all set. I was hoping to get some footage of us actually doing some re uh, resin work. Uh, that will be in a future video. It'll either be me doing it or I will do a quick video of my wife and her first attempt into this um, pressure pot. Upgrades I want to make to this. There's a better stand idea that I had. So in the pressure pot, we got a lot of vertical space, not a lot of horizontal space. So one idea is to actually mount this on a stand this way. Having this mounted this way, granted I lose some of the vertical height, but I also have a longer bed so I can do longer things. Um, and I, I think we're more likely to run into the vertical limit of this versus the horizontal limit um, within the tank. So I think having being able to move this sideways and vertically, stand it up, lay it on its side, gives us the most versatility. But again, pressure pot. We did it. We did it. You and I, we did this together. Thanks for coming along. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the future. And I'm out.